They say every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the role. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let we join hands with ICPC, make a better Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting edition of Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. I am your host, Murna Barnabas Atiai. Success, they say, is not a destination, but a journey. In our last edition, we took you on a tour on the feat the Commission accomplished in 2020 in the area of its enforcement mandate, despite the hurdle placed by COVID-19 pandemic. Today on the program, we shall continue the journey by bringing you bit by bit the Commission's accomplishments in its preventive and public enlightenment duties. Stay with us. If you're just tuning in, this is Corruption Must Go. Section 6 B to D of the ICPC enabling law vests in the Commission the power to check the structural, administrative, and financial processes of government organizations to identify corruption prone areas with a view to providing remediation and reinforcing integrity in the systems. To this end, ICPC during the year under review had conducted a sizable number of system studies in MDAs and other public bodies. Interestingly, these studies revealed systemic dysfunction, willful or inadvertent breaches of regulation and deliberate violation of laid down rules of doing government business by public officials. Mr. Olushegun Adigun, Planning Research and Statistics Department shares some of the findings. We conducted, uh, the chairman graciously approved the conduct of some uh, system study and review okay. of some organizations in year 2020. And uh, we were at uh, at the Federal Ministry of Education, where we were able to conduct the system study of that organization, as well as that of Federal Ministry of Health. And uh, officers of the department were at uh, National Primary Health Care Development Agency in order to conduct the system study and review of the agency. We are equally at now National Open University of Nigeria as well as that of pre presidential amnesty program. Actually, that of presidential amnesty program was more or less a request because of what the commission has been doing because of the track record of the commission in the conduct of system study and review. And if I can talk a little about what system study and review is all about, is uh, actually a, a, a program designed in order to check leakages and abuses, in order to reduce the incident of corruption in ministry department and agencies. So what the commission does is that we are going to carry out an holistic review of the activities of any of the organizations that we visited. What we do is that we, 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 we write our report, list out the findings and the recommendations. But we are not going to close our eyes because if there are areas 
of flagrant abuse, maybe embezzlement, and we are able to flag it in our report, definitely the Commission will take an action on that. So, in a nutshell, this is what we are able to do in year 2020, like uh, that of National Health Insurance Scheme that we conducted in uh, 2019 to 2020, where the Commission was able to restrain over 19 billion that have gone into the into into private pockets. You understand? It was through the system study and review that we were able to discover that, that amount of money and the commission took an urgent action by stopping the movement of that money. You understand? So and there are so many like the issue of the federal character principle, there is no agency that we visited that no violated that principle. You see some state were short change in the issue of recruitment where some people where some state surpassed the the the, the, the prescribe uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the abuse the federal character principle for 2021 because you know that we have actually prioritized the sectors we are looking more of health education agric and water so these are the areas that the commission will concentrate more in the culture of systems study and review because they affect the life of people directly. We are not saying that other sectors are not important, but our focus is on this for, for year 2021. Suddenly, the world stopped. COVID-19 does not discriminate. Like corruption, everyone. Regardless of social status, economic class, color, creed, religion, pays. Corruption is deadly to development. COVID-19 is deadly to human lives. Corrupt persons exploit times of emergency response. To act corruptly. Do not be tempted. Don't enrich yourself. With COVID-19 relief funds, ICPC is watching. If we can end COVID-19 by sacrificing social contacts, we can eradicate corruption. COVID-19 can be prevented. Also, corruption can be prevented. ICPC salutes all the people on the front lines of COVID-19 fight. We salute you too for saying no to corruption. 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 You're still watching Corruption Must Go. As part of the Commission's strategy to police the public sector institutions, a lot of corruption monitoring activities and sensitization sessions were undertaken and conducted respectively. Mr. Abia Udofia, former Director, Corruption Monitoring and Evaluation Department, sheds more light on these activities. For 2020, we want to thank the Commission for their support, the Chairman and the Board, their support and the, the encouragement. Uh, it wasn't a bad year despite the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, first, let me take the deployment of the ECS, the Ethics and Compliance Code Card. We did that in, uh, deployed it in 352 MDAs. And then I must say that um, only three, only two, three, two, 232 responded. And then well, some had claimed they had issues because of the pandemic, staff, logistics, and so forth. And the essence of this is to, to see the compliance level of these MDAs regarding ethics, regarding their values. Uh, statutory expectations and so forth. So we we saw a, a lot of things in uh, in, 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 in in our study. Uh, if you don't mind, if I may just uh, give you some of this, uh, we found that um, about um, in fact none of the NDAs, none of them, uh, had a full score. Yeah. Uh, what, what are called full compliance. 27 MDAs attained what we call substantial compliance. 
and that's a very low score. And then 77 attained partial compliance, and the other six had non compliance at all. So, um, 60 MDAs do not have ports, that's a huge number. The conclusion is that um, we have sole administrators, and there are no boards to carry out policies and the statutory expectations of the agencies. And uh, there's tyranny, there's abuse of uh, process, misuse of funds, and so forth. Then uh, we saw that federal medical centers, very notably, uh, nationwide do not have establishment laws. They're acting under their general hospitals, and that is not really proper. And then uh, does give room for board and management of hospitals to take arbitrary actions. Because if you don't have those laws setting them up. In fact, they just behave any way they want. Then, um, 88 MBA violated the provision of the Public Procurement Act. <laughs> and concerning procurement, it means certain things were done or were not supposed to be um, uh, carried out, and they went on to do that against the law in the last three years. Then, uh, 53 MBAs have been on the uh, Inland Revenue tax forecast list in the last three years. <laughs> and 132 MDAs were not responsive. They didn't respond. And we classified them as high corruption risk MDAs. So we, it's, it's a very, very sad um, uh, report seeing that such number of MDAs did not respond. and. Um, which means they are not really uh, inclined you know, to be yeah, in tune with what the Commission is um, putting forward in cleansing their systems, complying with integrity, with ethics, and um, the statutory expectations of that, of, you know, those agencies. So these are just the issues that um, we want to ensure that they comply with. And uh, we are taking steps to either proceed for us to investigate these MDAs. And then uh, if there are issues found, then of course we prosecute, we prosecute them. Then um, we also monitored um, procurement processes, bid openings of MDAs um, in, their, in their procurement um, uh, needs. Uh, the idea the, is to see that whatever they, I mean, that process too also has some form of integrity and transparency uh, because service delivery will not really be attained if you don't have those things done according to law okay. uh, and integrity. Then um, we had uh, ACTUS inauguration. ACTUS are the anti-corruption and transparency units in MDAs. Uh, they are to serve as um, an internal planning system uh, units for the MDAs. Uh, we inaugurated 62 MDAs in 2020, and um, we had lectures and sensitization. In, uh, we had eight now such uh, programs. Um, you see, if this 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 um, efforts of collaboration is to ensure that the actors are effective and they keep to what I mean the mandate that the commission and uh, expect of them. Uh, if um, you you have um, up to that are uh, It makes our work more difficult. It, it slows down our work. But if they are effective, it lessens our stress and um, even gives the public, in fact, the, the public also owns this um, uh, this fight against corruption, not just the commission or the anti corruption bodies. Uh, for 2021, we want to take it beyond um, what we did for 2020. Uh, we want to deploy. Um, in the ECS, in more MDAs. We want to deploy the AEI in more MDAs. We want to conduct more system studies. We want to conduct more corruption risk assessments. And um, you see, these tools, if, if they properly are nest and um, imbibed, will really help us in fighting corruption at every level. I am a Nigerian. A highly cultured race. My culture abhors corruption. 
and with my integrity, a new Nigeria is possible. I say no to corruption today to build a future for my children. Join me and imbibe the culture of integrity to build a Nigeria of our dreams. Remarkable too during the year under review, the Commission stepped up its public enlightenment and education campaigns by initiating participatory and attitudinal change programs that would involve all Nigerians in order to enlist and foster their support. The Commission also organized virtual capacity building training for judges, held stakeholders consultative meeting on national ethics and integrity policy, and a conference on COVID-19 in collaboration with the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation. Other landmark achievements recorded are webinar on Nigerian youths, admonishing them to be strong and stand against corruption all the times, as well as webinar on International Anti-Corruption Day 2020. Let us hear from the Head of Public Enlightenment and Education Department, Mr. Ashiru Baba. Education and public enlightenment activities of the Commission are statutory activities embedded in Section 6 E and F of the ICPC Act 2000. And uh, using this platform, we carry, out, we carry out a number of sensitization, we mobilize the public and uh, engage the public actively and effectively in the fight against corruption. We let the public to own, we encourage them to own the fight against corruption, to feel the pain and the scourge of corruption enough to uh, participate in the fight against corruption actively and uh, it cuts across our activities cut across uh, all segments of the society these activities too numerous in number are compressed into three major key performance uh, indicators uh, uh, in line with the commission's uh, strategic action plan uh, five-year strategic action plan 2019 to 2023 Principal among them uh, are ICPC supported civil society group activities. Uh, under this, uh, in 2020, we had a target of 72 such activities. But we accomplished, we were able to accomplish 53. Yeah, largely because of the COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, endemic, actually. So you can see now we are under the civil society activities we were able to accomplish about 80% achievement. Then second uh, KPI, second category, is the sensitization, general sensitization we, con we conduct among members of the public. On this one, we set a target of 726 sensitization that we intended to carry out in the year 2020. We were able to uh, uh, conduct 572 sensitizations which is about 78% uh, achievement. And uh, that is because we also uh, exploited the uh, visual, the Zoom, you know, so we do not allow the COVID-19 pandemic to bog us down. So we, we exploited the, uh, the Zoom uh, kind of uh, sensitization, the Zoom meetings, the Zoom conferences, you know, uh, to our advantage. Now the third category of our activities under the public education and enlightenment of the ICPC are the clubs and vanguard formation. Clubs in secondary school and vanguard formation uh, in tertiary institutions as well as uh, uh, associations among core members. Remember I told you that uh, we, have, uh, we have formed clubs, we have, I mean our sensitization, our sensitization cuts across all segments of the society, especially the youth. So these, are, these, are, these activities are part of our youth outreach programs. So we formed clubs, uh, vanguards, you know, in 2020, in spite of the uh, COVID-19. Uh, on this one, we were not able to achieve much, actually. We set the target of 220 clubs and vanguards across uh, all institutions of learning uh, in the country uh, for the year 2020. We were able only to, to form 20 because the schools were at home. But um, when we were f uh, carrying out youth competition, essay and music competition, 
uh, SA competition among secondary schools in particular, okay. we came across uh, about 142 schools across Nigeria that indicated uh, to form the anti-corruption clause. After seeing uh, our invitations, you know, to schools to participate in the SA competition, so our our chairman, Professor Bolaji Owasonye, senior advocate of Nigeria, said, "Ah, we should uh, welcome them on board." So you can say, in principle, we had registered 142 in principles, plus the 20 we had registered initially, uh, bringing the total achievement to 162, which was about uh, just uh, 60, 62, 63 percent of the 220 we had set as target for ourselves. We also conducted music competition, not just music as uh, hip hop music or jazz or whatever. It's, uh, this music is about the fight against corruption. The youth, the talented youths of Nigeria, were encouraged to participate in musical competition, music that will showcase the fight, depict the fight against corruption, and uh, send the fight against corruption uh, to, to Nigeria generally through music. Uh, in the public enlightenment segment, particularly, we had uh, two media parties. We interacted with the media uh, twice. We had one in Abuja and the one and another second one in, uh, in, in Lagos. And the two parties were very, very rewarding. We had a field, I mean, the media had a field day and uh, the publicity was uh, fantastic. The aim was very, it was achieved. Uh, the aim of sensitizing the public and creating awareness was, uh, was achieved. And then that was, that was in addition to the regular radio and television interviews that we've had. In 2021, let's pray that uh, the second phase of the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic does not bog us down. But uh, like you've seen in the previous, I mean, in the performances the previous year, we do not allow the COVID-19 pandemic to wear us so much down. But uh, we intend, COVID or no COVID, we intend to uh, improve on our performances in the year 2020. We intend to uh, ensure that our activities are more robust, are more engaging, are more participating, the awareness, the sensitization are more effective and people get interested in what we are doing. Like ICPC broke the obstacle posed by COVID-19 to record this success story in 2020, we can also break the obstacle to our development by saying no to corruption. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on toll-free line 0800-22-554272 or email us on info at icpc.gov.ng. That's our package for today. See you again next week. Until then, bye for now.